biosafety rules for virology laboratory so here we will talk about the rules regarding the biosafety in virology lab now viruses are the tiny particles that can only be seen under electron microscopy so they are quite dangerous as compared to bacteria and fungi during the past 3 decades 30 new pathogens have been discovered and of the 30 16 were viruses now in pakistan communicable and non communicable diseases uh, the data regarding these diseases are available but here we lack the information security the most important components of information security that we lack in pakistan are the integrity and availability so here data is available regarding hiv hepatitis b and c viruses dengue viruses ebola viruses but there is no maintenance no completeness of data and thus it is not available to the international community now when we ever we talk about the virology lab it consists of three elements first one is the physical infrastructure second one human resources and the third one are the equipments and supplies so these are the key elements like all other labs virology lab is also based on these three key elements now let's discuss these key elements one by one first one is the physical infrastructure here we look at the techniques that we have to perform in the virology lab it can be either virus isolation detection of viral antigens and antibodies which is also known as serological test or it can be isolation of nucleic acid now uh, during construction virology lab must be constructed as a separate lab it should be a multi story building but if it is not possible then it should be at the end of the corridor so that it remain isolated from the entry of the visitors so here in the virology lab like all other biosafety level 3 labs only authorized person can enter into the lab now once the virology lab is present at the end of the corridor we can stop contamination we can follow biosafety standards or guidelines in a better way now uh, pathogens just like they are divided into four groups the same is for viruses we divide them into risk group 1 2 3 and 4 risk group 1 these are the viruses which are responsible for no or low community consequences so here open bench work can be performed for example we can make use of immunochromatographic techniques and the one of the example of viruses which are included in risk group 1 are adeno associated viruses risk group 2 it causes low consequences regarding the community it can be performed as an open bench work or in biosafety cabinets it includes herpes viruses or the viruses that are responsible for foot and mouth disease the third one is the risk group 3 these are the viruses that cause high uh, community consequences but the diseases are somewhat treatable but keep in mind that here we use a biosafety cabinet the HIV hepatitis B virus rabies they can be treated up to supportive level risk group 4 cause very high community consequences so they must be eradicated from the earth here we use biosafety cabinet either 2 or 3 it includes smallpox nipha viruses and there is a list of viruses which are included in risk group 4 now for, for every virology lab we follow a typical biosafety level 3 lab it should be separate from the traffic flow 
ताकि कंटेमिनेशन को रोका जा सके देर मस्ट बी इंटरलॉकिंग एंड डबल डोर एंट्री एक डोर एंट्री के लिए दैट इज ओनली फॉर ऑथराइज पर्सन वाइल द एग्जिट फ्रॉम द अदर साइड ऑफ द डोर सिमिलरली इट इज बेटर टू यूज ऑटो क्लेव विद इन द फेसिलिटी सो दैट वी कैन डी कंटेमिनेट द वेस्ट प्रायर टू इट्स डिस्पोजल Similarly air flow plays a very important role either we are using or performing a technique as an open bench work or in a biosafety cabinet here the direction of the air flow must be inward then there must be adequate space between the benches techniques must be performed on a separate bench there must be space for microscopy there must be separate room for washing sterilization then there must be adequate water electricity and gas supply walls ceilings floors must be resistant to chemicals even the bench tops of the virology lab must be resistant to chemicals alkali or to any other uh, dangerous chemicals now like all other biosafety level 3 labs basins should be near the entry and exit door with adequate water supply and there must be hand washing soap uh, that can decontaminate your hands now the supervisors of the biosafety level 3 lab or of virology lab also plan for emergency cases for example aag lagne ki surat mein ya kisi और किस्म के और हेजर्स में सच एज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी हेजर्स केमिकल हेजर्स दे शुड बी प्रॉपर एग्जिट्स चाहे वो एरो की फॉर्म में मैंशन हुआ हो सिम्बल्स की फॉर्म में मैंशन हुआ हो दे मस्ट बी रेगुलर एग्जिट और ऑल्टरनेटिव एग्जिट्स फॉर द वर्कर्स वर्किंग इन द वायरोलॉजी लैब द सेकेंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट element of the virology lab are the human resources for uh, obviously for virology lab we need a qualified virologist that has an experience of at least 5 years in a virology lab they have to give the accurate report to the patient two junior microbiologists they supervise the technicians regarding the techniques that whether they are following by safety and by security guidelines then they have to manage the stock as well two lab technologists or one or two supportive staff depending upon the load of the virology lab depending upon the need of the virology lab we can change the number of the lab technologists as well as of the supportive staff that have to perform various techniques The third element includes equipments and supplies. Here we have to use such an equipment that prevent or minimize the contact between the person and the infectious material. The equipments must be free of sharp edges and they must be resistant to corrosion. Agar kisi kisam ki breakage ho jati hai equipment mein first decontaminate it. लेकिन इक्विपमेंट में भी ये क्वालिटी होनी चाहिए कि इट शुड बी फ्री ऑफ कोरेशन देन इक्विपमेंट पार्ट शुड बी इम्परमिएबल टू लिक्विड्स लाइक केमिकल्स वी हैव डिवाइडेड इक्विपमेंट्स इनटू टू ग्रुप्स लेट्स टॉक अबाउट फर्स्ट वन इज द असेंशियल इक्विपमेंट एंड लेट्स टॉक अबाउट देम दीज आर द बायो सेफ्टी कैबिनेट्स विच आर रिक्वायर्ड फॉर ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ वायरोलॉजी लैब देन इंक्यूबेटर्स freezers from minus 20 to minus 80 degree centigrade inverted light microscopy dark room for fluorescent microscopy water bath ph meter vortex electronic balance autoclave micropipettes of all uh, ranges should be available such as 5 microliter 20 100 and 1000 microliters essential equipments also includes enzyme linked immunosorbent assay uh, equipment it can include elisa washer and reader then polymerase chain reaction machine that is commonly known as pcr machine 
then we must have a gel electrophoresis apparatus UV illuminators to examine the bands that appeared after performing the PCR. Then all types of glassware such as flowers, beakers, they should be available in the lab. The next type of the equipment is desirable equipment. These are sh uh, shaker, water baths. If agitation is required, then there must be shaker water baths. Ultra centrifugation rocking platform. In the same way, we can divide the reagents depending upon the need of the lab. For example, different types of cultures regarding the culture of viruses, they must be available. Reagents regarding the ELISA technique, they must be available. For example, we use torch that is toxoplasmosis, rubella, cytomegalo and herpes virus. Here ELISA is available for all three these type of viruses.